Nation. Let's go. Welcome in to the Toyota Lounge, driven by your Front Range Toyota stores. Toyota is the official vehicle of DMVR. It's DMVR Buffs Prime Time. What's up, everyone in the Toyota chat? Happy Thursday to you, my friend. Happy Thursday to you as well. Big day, Jake. Not only the beginning of the Masters, mm -hmm. but more importantly, first round of indoor golf league playoffs. Tonight? Tonight. Can't wait. Yes. Uh, the squad has the two seed. Okay. Going in, we swept, I think, our last three weeks wow. to take, take the two seed. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big night. You're going to be... Uh I mean, you should be inspired by these guys uh, out here on the green right now. I am. This is a green jacket. All golfers can relate to this. Once the Masters hits, all you want to do is golf. Yep. Like, just watching this just gives you the bug. You got to go play. Is the Masters the official start of golf season? I would say for the average fan, yes. Not going to lie. I'm a casual fan, and I even get the itch a little bit more yeah. around this time. Yeah, for sure. Alrighty, chat, let's get into it today. Uh, we got four new spring game visitors that we're going to talk over. We had DJ McKinney on the podium for the first time as a buff. We got Coach Mathis only a second time as a buff on the podium. We got to talk. Wow. Um, we got updates on Cormani McLean, but we start today with the best player on the team, Travis Hunter, playing a new position on defense this year. Yes. Uh, I'm going to let you set the stage for this before I give my opinion on it. So we'll go over the press conferences, but Travis sounds like he's been playing more out of the slot this year. Um, again, we'll get to the quote from Coach Mathis, but it seems like because DJ McKinney and Preston and Hodge have come in and impressed and played so well, they are very confident with what they can do on the outside. Uh, most notably, Preston Hodge's versatility inside and outside to allow Travis to play inside and outside and just get him closer to the ball, uh, man up with people in the slot. So that seems like it's going to be the plan moving forward. And you believe that? I do. I do not. Why not? Well, I look back mm -hmm. at last spring. What did Travis do in every spring practice last year? Played wide receiver. Yes. He didn't, if you remember... He didn't start really getting defensive reps until the fall. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was like we saw like one defensive rep from Travis in the spring, and it was because <laughs> Coach Prime was like trying to teach the other guys what to do. And he right. was like, Travis, come show them this. Um, so <laughs> yeah. the reason I bring that up is because I think this is building the toolbox mm. for actually not just Travis Hunter, but also for Preston Hodge. Preston Hodge, very proficient in the slot. Travis Hunter, elite on the outside. Why not cross train those guys? Mm -hmm. Because I think the real reason here is when Travis isn't on the field on defense, then you're going to want Preston yes. on the outside. So you make both of those guys movable. And sure, if you know if you like the matchup or if Preston's locking down, and then you're bringing Travis in, then of course you could play him in the slot, and you know he can use some of his versatility. Maybe you know get in front of a few more balls from the inside. But I don't think that this is something that we're going to see uh, a lot on Saturdays, mainly because Travis Hunter is so good as an outside corner mm -hmm. that I can't imagine them moving him when the games count. That's fair enough. Consistently. Let me read you the quote then. Okay. And then uh, let's see if you change your mind. Coach Mathis, this is what he opened up with. He said, new guys are adjusting well. We have a good group in that back end, man. Travis is playing a different position. We, were, we are real multiple back there. A lot of guys playing different positions. It's going real good. I'm excited to see these guys come together, gel, and perform. But with the new additions of guys who have come in, they've been great. Preston Hodge has been doing really good. He's been playing inside and outside, which is something that's very valuable to us that allows Travis to move around and playing inside as well. Uh, you've seen the last couple times in practice, Travis has been playing a majority inside, I mean, we can do that, and we are strong in the outside with Preston and DJ. It's going to be a sight to see out there. We are very excited. Was that supposed to change my mind? He was then asked about <laughs> the differences between Coach Livingston and Coach Kelly mm, and the, the defense. Okay. 
He says, uh, well, he was asked about, you know, if his working relationship's the same with Coach Livingston as it was with Coach Kelly. He goes, yeah, it's the same. Uh, the philosophy's a little different, but they're both knowledgeable about what they want to get accomplished on the field. For the players, I think it's more of, a, more of putting more pressure on the outside, on the corners, and the nickelback. We're going to play a lot more cover one, middle of the field close this year than last year. We were more too high. So we're putting more pressure on the outside and more pressure on the guys to make plays and to let them play fast to their strengths. Um, and then he did go in a little bit more on Travis about why he's playing inside and whether that fits his skill set. And he kind of gave an interesting answer to that one. Um, let me see here. Sorry, it's going to take me a minute to find this. It's all good. I think this was a good point in uh, the comments here from Mr. Hillsman. It says, Travis in the slot, according to math, is so they can keep him on wide receiver one, for example. That's the quote I'm trying to find, okay. yeah. What's taking you so long? The, the stupid Slack transcription is just it, the way it's broken up is... The Slack transcription. Okay, little, uh, little media tip here. Yeah. Slack has free audio transcribing. Yeah, and you don't even have to do anything. Just upload it. You just upload it, and it, and it transcribes it. It's kind of cool. I will say it's not the best, but um, it does help out a lot. So he said here, certain guys that blitz good, they're going to blitz. Certain guys that cover good, they're going to cover. Um, and that's huge for us. Um, I cannot find this damn quote, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. But basically, yeah, what the comment said. Coach Mathis said that a lot of the best receivers in college are playing in the slot now, so it makes sense for us to put our best cover guy in the slot, um, but also allow him to have that versatility. He mentioned Travis's ability to come downhill, most notably play the B-gap. So that's in between the, uh, the guard and tackle. That's pretty inside. It's just getting, I think, one of your best players more around the football. Yeah, and I think that makes perfect sense. Also... The, the the old world, you kind of put your third best corner in the slot. Obviously, they had to have a specific skill set, so you you know you you were seeking that out. But it was very rare to see the number one best corner on your team move into the slot. Now, depending on matchups, you're seeing a lot more teams do it and experiment with it. So I think it totally is. It's, as I said off the top, it's building the toolbox. Yes. Uh, so you can move things around. A lot of times you'll hear, uh, you know, like the Broncos will be going up against, this is, isn't an actual example because I think they, PS2 can do this. But like the Broncos will be going up against Justin Jefferson and all of a sudden Justin Jefferson gets matched up on the two corner on like Damari Mathis and gets an easy catch and you're just like, why isn't he following him? Yeah. And then the coach will be like, yeah, like, we just like to keep him on the left side the whole game because that's where he's most comfortable. Right. Whereas if you're cross train Travis at every single position, then you never have to worry about, okay, well, we don't want to put him in a position where he's uncomfortable. Yep. I mean, this defense is uh, going to be very different. I mean, Coach Mathis mentioned just the shells that they're playing in. They're going to be more aggressive. They're going to play a lot more cover one, a lot more single high. Whereas last year, if you remember, it was a lot of two high looks. Um, and that's why... The slot was kind of a big position last year for that reason is because you're going to have more responsibilities out of when you're in too high out of the slot. Now in single high and corner and cover one, you just have that guy lock up in the slot. You can have him be a little bit more versatile with, you know, attacking the line of scrimmage. And that's something we've talked about, too, with Coach Livingston's defense and what they did in uh, Cincinnati under Lou Anarumo. The slot was a very aggressive player for them. It came, they came downhill a lot. They blitzed a lot. Um, but really, they were just kind of locking up in man coverage. So that's what we're going to see a lot more of this year. Interesting, for sure. Uh, I, I guess my question to you is: Would you, ex are you expecting to see Travis play the slot on first and ten for North Dakota State? Yes. Oh, okay. I'll say no. Okay. Everyone remember this. All right. Take a screenshot or I guess a picture. It'll be at home uh, of the field on that first play. I mean, you've got me thinking more about your point now, too. And I think that we will see him more in the slot than we did last year. But he's really just going to be playing all over the field and just matching up 
with whoever they deem the number one receiver week in, week out, and yep. just kind of traveling. Or even the number one threat on that play. Yes. It's exciting. All right, you ready, man? I think so. So Coach Mathis was asked about Cormani McLean. He was asked, what's Cormani's status? He said, Cormani came back today. He was out there running, and he's got to get back in shape. Once he does that, once he finishes running, he'll be back on the football field. That's it. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, the guy hasn't been at practice, obviously. Yeah. We're talking about the guy getting in shape, and it's April 11th, two and a half weeks before the spring game, basically. Uh, yeah. The only person I feel like I talk, I uh, hear more about getting in shape is myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, that's all we ever heard. I yes. still got to work up, still got to work in. He's been, he wasn't here, he wasn't there. This is, is this a new saga or is this an extension of the saga? This is a complete, this is extension. This isn't the even. The saga new. has never stopped. It's never ended, yeah. I don't know what's, what's happening here. Um, I'll say this. The, the last time we talked about Cormani McLean when it wasn't a part of a saga was during our cornerback preview. Mm -hmm. And I said, this guy hitting his potential has the ability to unlock a different caliber of this defense. Now, I also think, you know, DJ McKinney and Preston Hodge going to another level has that same ability. But Cormani McLean was in the top 10 highest ranked players ever on rivals. Yes. Uh, or was that corners? Top 10 highest ranked corners. I, did, uh, I think it, yeah, was corners. it was just corners. Top yeah. 10 highest ranked corners ever on the, the recruiting site. So, like, obviously his ceiling was and, you know, is first round pick, high first round pick. It's a little different. Where I'm getting here, though, is that from then until now, we've only gone the wrong way. Yes. We're not going... We're not on an upward tra trajectory towards Cormani reaching his potential. Um, that in no way means it can never happen, but it's not. It, it doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't make me feel good about the situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know that he wasn't. He wasn't practicing. Now he's working back. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's my, that's my perspective on it. So I mean, last year I kind of preached patience with him, right? Patience with him getting here, patience with him acclimating, patience with him getting on the field. And I think that was, he earned that, right? Like, yeah, and, he and you were time. right. You were right. But it's, this was his off season, man. And I can't help but feel like he's kind of just let this opportunity pass by him a bit. And we, I think we've seen DJ McKinney and Preston Hodge pass him up. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I kind of, I think I said that, I can't even remember. I think when we were, yeah, it was when we were doing the starters. Starters. Yeah. And I said, I think it's going to be McKinney. Um, and obviously, Hodge was involved as well. We had him in the slot. But it's, uh, I don't know. You know, a lot of coaches say your freshman year ends first semester of freshman year. Yeah, he's not a freshman anymore. Yeah, someone in the comments said he's a freshman. He's not. He's a sophomore now. Yeah. Um, at least in a football sense. Yeah. So I understand the, the perspective of he's still a freshman, but this is the beginning of your next football season as right. a player. You've gone through a full one now. Yeah. Uh, again, this is not to say that it's over. Pull the plug on Cormani. Forget about it. Move on. Uh, it's just not – we're not – seeing the trends that we would want to see right i mean and if coach math is saying he's got to get back in football shape and basically run to get back on the field i mean what are we talking about here maybe best case scenario this time next week practice two next week that'd be today was seven saturday's eight tuesday will be nine let's practice 10 definitely like we got to see something at some point yeah for sure and heck maybe he comes at you know, takes on the summer with the, with vigor and comes back in the fall ready to go and burst on the scene. And, you know, he's popping up every day in practice. And, of course, that's what everyone wants. Um, but 
got to you got to start moving in that direction. He needs some traction here during the spring. Yeah. Um, so we'll see if he's able to generate that. Do you think this will finally get the Cormani talk to die down a bit? No, <laughs> not at all. No, not there's going to have to be. Yeah. No. But I understand it, man. Like, he's a five star player. Yeah. That's, I, I don't blame anyone for constantly being interested in what's going on. Uh, I laugh at where is Cormani because <laughs> we usually don't know. Exactly. Uh, we don't know yeah. either half the time. But I, I understand why there's so much in, intrigue with him. All right. Um, let's move on to the rest of the press conferences from today. You want to tell us about your wonderful Toyota? Best car ever. Best car I've ever had easily. Uh, I've told this story before, but I used to have a, a, a different car. Mm-hmm constantly doing something with it something in the shop the windows not rolling down the the mirror isn't working anymore in terms of the like little auto mirror mover whatever it is there was always an issue and i have legitimately had zero issues with this toyota now having it for i think four years um absolutely love my toyota love our front range toyota dealers love our partnership with them and uh i mean i just can't say enough about my toyota yeah, man, they're the best. Did you see the new 2025 Forerunner? Yes, it looks insane. <laughs> it looks so dope. Um, so visit your Front Range Toyota stores at a location near you. Auto Nation Toyota in Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson, as some would say, <laughs> Stevenson, as I would say, Toyota in East Aurora, uh, and, or sorry, yeah, and Stevenson Toyota in Lakewood. Toyota's a proud partner of CF CU Athletics and the official D vehicle of DNVR. And then shout out to the homies over at Circus Sportsbook with the artisanal lines. Yes. Um, one of the only sports books out there that's still handcrafting. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Handcrafting their lines. So you're going to get better odds on those plus money, money lines uh, on basically everything over at Circus Sportsbook. And you can download it now if you're in Colorado. Go to circusports.com. Circus Sports bets can only be made while physically located in the state of Colorado. Must be 21 or older. All rights reserved. Circus Sports Colorado encourages you to gamble responsibly. If you have a gambling problem, call or text 1 800 Gambler. Visit problemgamblingcolorado.org or just go to Vegas and go to Circa and bet there. Amen. Um, I, I got to say, you know, just reading some of the comments, it's not everyone, but like people are saying, stop piling on Cormani. This isn't helping. I've, I, I think that's the furthest thing from what we're doing. We're having a, a honest discussion about where he's at right now. Yeah. And I feel like we've been really supportive of Cormani. Totally. Basically since he was rumored to come to see you. Totally. So, I mean, this is just the situation. This is what Coach Mathis said. This is just what's going on right now. He sure. hasn't been at practice. And I don't think anyone could make the argument that anything we said was unfair. I don't think so either. All right, the rest of Coach uh, Mathis's press conference here. Um, he was asked about differences between Coach Livingston and Coach Kelly's scheme. He said, Coach Livingston's going to make the players make plays and not just um, the system. With Coach Kelly, he brought the system here from Alabama, and that's the type of system uh, that we had out here. When Rob got here, he wanted to evaluate the talent that we have in the room and then make that happen. He's able to make some calls and make some adjustments to the defense, fit what we have in that room, and I think he's done a good job with that. I think the players understand that we want guys in position to make plays based off of their ability. That's huge for the players, knowing that they got the calls are going to be made, going to be based on who we want in the game. Um, he was asked about DJ McKinney and how he's lived up to the hype, uh, or even surpa surpassed it. Really, he said he's been really surprising. The way he reacts, understands, and wants to be coach because he understands that he's got a ways to go, but he's able to come in every day and give us everything to get better. Uh, he's been huge. His knowledge, his ability to play on the football field, it's been amazing. Listen to this. We knew we were getting a player, but we didn't know we were getting a leader also off the field, and he's doing a great job of communicating on the field. Love it. He's then asked about Omari and Cooper. 
what he's seen out of him this season. And that's when he revealed that they asked Cooper to change positions this year, and he's really stepped up to the challenge, playing more safety to cover tight ends. Coach Mathis said that's his strength, and with the defense that we have put in, he understands what we need from him. He's doing a great job. He's a leader back there. He played a lot of football, not only for me, but before he got here. And he's really taken the young guys under his wing by showing his role. Um, going to be a little bit reduced from last year, but he stepped up and understands his role in this defense. He's going to be a key guy for Coach Livingston. All right. Just found the Travis quote. <laughs> uh, he was then asked about the transition for Trevor Woods from his perspective. Um, and he said he thought that was the right move for him to kind of switch down to linebacker. Uh, even when we talked about it last year at the end of the year, going down and playing in the box, I think that's something that fits him better, especially in this system. We don't have to bring in another backer or another DB because we have him. Uh, we have other – or he can blitz and he can cover the tight end. It just works out well for him in the long run playing to his strengths. He's in the box. He's an in-the-box guy, and having him down there and his ability to know what's going on with the defense, that's a huge plus, man. Anytime you got a guy that's been around so long and has that many snaps in a different position, um, you know, go look at last week. We had a safety go down, and he was able to step right in, plug and play, and he didn't lose anything. So Trevor's been really, really good for us because of his knowledge of the game. Uh, he was then asked about a few more of the younger guys, Carter and Jaden. So this is he revealed that Jaden uh, went down with a hamstring injury at some point. So he's not healthy right now. Okay. Um, and then Carter's not healthy right now either, he said. But he said, we're excited to get Carter back. It sounds like Carter's further along in returning than Jaden. So we're excited to get Carter back because he's going to be another guy that we think can play three positions. Put him out in the corner, uh, play him in the nickel, but it can also go back and play safety. We've got some versatility in that room based off the defense that we're running, and it's going to be good when we have everyone back and healthy on the field. All right. That was it from him. Good stuff. Um, yeah, great stuff today from him. And then DJ McKinney comes on the podium. Uh, was asked how he's like in Boulder. Says, I love everything. I love the mountains. I love the coach. I love my teammates. Just ready to dive into the culture here. First time you've... Uh Talk to DJ. Mm -hmm. What was your impression? That dude is big. <laughs> he's got long arms and he's tall as hell. All right. That's, he, see, that's what we want to hear. That's, that's more important than anything he said. For sure. <laughs> uh, he's just... He, I can see exactly why Coach Prime is like taking him specifically under his wing and trying yeah. to really coach out all the potential that that guy has. Um, he was asked about the transition from Oklahoma State to here. Um, he said they were playing a lot more off over there. Now he's much more uh, on the line of scrimmage playing press. He called Travis a dog. Um, he said him and Omari Miller are the guys he's really been going up against in one-on-ones, too. Nice. Called Omari Miller a dog, too. He actually he said he was a silent assassin. That's what it was, silent assassin, yeah. Yeah. Um, what else do we got? He was asked, you know, did you follow Colorado last year? Because he was at Oklahoma State, of course. Um, he said, yeah, on social media, you open up your phone. That's really the first thing you see is people in Colorado. And looking back at it, I never really thought I could see myself being a part uh, of this. But he's here now. Cool. Um, that's really about it. He did call Shador the best quarterback he's ever played with. Wow. He said... Uh, I mean, that's not surprising. For sure. But he says he makes, he'd be making throws sometimes, man, and he just like shook his head like, <laughs> what can you do, really? Yep. Uh, he says, I think I'm in a great position, and sometimes that ball is just right there. But I also feel like he's preparing me for the next level because uh, the ball is coming out really, really fast, and that's what he's been doing. Um, he said he could play inside outside he said he could play basically anywhere on the defense sounds like he's only been playing outside though as it stands that's really it though both of these are up on our YouTube channel if you want to go check it out great Um, but look DJ McKinney is 
you know, we talked about him yesterday when we did camp story or spring storylines, and we did for a reason. He's on the podium today, was a standout as a true freshman at Oklahoma State, would have been a starter on their defense this year. And now he's really, he's going to be the guy, I think, opposite Travis, uh, or I guess next to him if Travis is in the slot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it feels really good to have Travis, DJ, and Preston. Um, And, you know, I can't, I'll repeat it again, but like if Cormani all of a sudden it all comes together for him and Mm -hmm. he blows up, like even better. Yep. But, I feel comfortable and confident in those three guys starting the season as your kind of three corners, depending on which defense you're coming out in. But uh, he's got all the makings. Mm -hmm. Uh, And from a physical perspective, certainly really impressive. Yep. But, you know, when you see Coach Prime lean into a guy like that and tell him, hey, like, I believe you could be a first round pick. Mm-hmm. Now I need you to believe it and go show it. It's a that guy can play and and I feel really good about those three. Yeah, me too, man. I'm I'm really feeling good about the, the you know, the back end, the secondary as a whole. Just what coach said today about how multiple they've been and how they've got guys playing all over the field cuz last year, you know, Travis got hurt um and Cormani stepped up in the USC game, but they were really struggling at a certain point. You know, Carter was hurt. Slush was hurt. Uh, Travis was hurt. Cormani wasn't ready at the beginning of all that when uh, Travis was hurt. So they were really thin at cornerback. And now they're just moving guys from safety uh, to nickel to corner. Like, they're trying to just make sure, cover all their bases, really, this season. So that if they do have an injury in that secondary, um, you know, they're not searching for an answer in September, October. They're just trying to figure out what their plan would be now, it seems. Yeah, for sure. Someone said, why do you think you know ball better than the coach? He said he's, he said Travis is playing inside. It's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> I'm saying I think that he's playing inside because they're trying to build his toolbox. <laughs> but when Saturday comes around, he will mostly still be playing outside. That's kind of what Coach Mathis said, too. Like, they're just trying to... What you said, expand his toolbox. Yep. Uh, just get him more reps all over the field. You know Travis can play outside corner. Oh yeah. And let's be honest, he didn't need them and he didn't need outside corner reps in spring last year. Probably doesn't need him again this year. Yep. Get him some one on one action just to, you know, refine the tools and then have him see what he can do in the slot just in case, you know, if something happens, or maybe you just feel comfortable enough with Preston and DJ on the outside. And you go, well, You know, this tight end has given us issues. Put Travis on him. I mean, I've seen the Broncos do that with uh, both Chris Harris and Aqib Tlaib. Yep. All right. We did get some uh, four new visitors for the spring today as well. But first, shout out to the wonderful folks over at Raising Canes. Raising Canes... I don't know, man. Probably one of the best chicken fingers fast food options out there. Oh, yeah. They're goaded. The sauce is unbelievable. Um, have you ever made, like, I've heard people say, like, you know, you got to make the raising cane sandwich. Ask for an extra piece of toast. Put the sauce on the toast. Put the tenders there. Put the coleslaw on top of it. And then you got a little chicken tender sandwich. That, like that. sounds amazing. <laughs> Might have to try it next time I'm at yes, Raising sir. Cane's. For cook to order hand battered chicken fingers, race into Raising Canes, turbocharge your chicken fingers and get them even faster by ordering online at raisingcanes.com or through their mobile app, Raising Canes Chicken Fingers, one love. Raising Canes is fire. Uh, and so is True Fan Travel. True Fan Travel is who we're partnering with to put together our trips this year. Uh, obviously, last year we did the TCU trip with them. And it was absolutely fantastic. We stayed at a great hotel. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had great accommodations from the airport to the hotel, the tickets all together. The whole experience was amazing. Uh, And I can't wait to do it again this year. Obviously, the Nebraska game, our number one target uh, for getting together with everyone to go down there. But uh, it's going to be really, really fun to see how many of these we can put together. And we're hoping to see all of you guys out there. Um. 
Someone said Travis is not playing a new position. He's just covering guys on the inside. That's a new position. Nickel's a different position than outside corner. Yep. 100%. Definitely. All right. I mentioned we had some new... new uh, I think we need some good news. Like a commitment or something. People are very uh, testy right now. And I don't know why. It's been Today was a great day. Uncle Neely said it was a great day of practice. <laughs> I don't know. It's, there just hasn't been enough going on <laughs> to, uh, to get people, you know... I guess. Hype, I guess. Um, we'll hit that, but actually, before we get to uh, visits here, Uncle Neely said it was again another day of like back and forth. He said uh, defense was really uh, giving the offense some problems, but then you know you go down into the red zone, and the offense is just finding their way to score, pretty consistently. Uh, he finally said Travis Player of the Day, first time he's ever done that. Wow, first time ever. Yeah. He he said it was because of you. He said we're not allowed to pick Shador or Travis. That I've never said that. That's just what I he have said. literally never said that. The only time I said uh, you can't pick Shador or Travis was what was that for? That's usually for our like player of the game picks on Fridays. Yeah, but I don't even think I said it then. I just if you if you do that, it's kind of lame. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Travis was all over the field today. It's like saying you're predicting Scotty Scheffler to win the Masters, like. Go out on a limb a little. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was making plays all over the field. Um, just sounds like another great day, man. We are eight days in now, and I truly don't think we've had a bad practice yet, just from what everyone else has been saying. That's great. So we're in good shape, guys. All right, some visits. Um, one guy... Coming in. We'll talk about him first. Who we've talked a lot about. Can you guess who? No. Mantrez Walker. Uh, actually, if I was going to guess one person, that's who it would have been. So I should have just guessed. Mantrez Walker is coming to the spring game. This is what, his third, maybe second time coming down to Boulder? I think, yeah. Second sounds right. He already got that crystal ball last month. Prediction to commit to Colorado. Could that be the weekend? He sees the spring game. He sees prime weekend. He goes home to Buford and realizes, yeah, it's time. I got a really, really good feeling about that one. Let's hope. Uh, he is a four-star on Rivals. A high, high three-star on 247, though. Um, I would tell you exactly where, but I'm not getting help. <laughs> Another guy we've talked about. LeJesse Harold, 2025 four-star edge, will be at Colorado Spring Game. Um, he came and visited, I think, a while back as well, but he's someone also who's been really tied to Colorado and this coaching staff lately. And if you look at... or. I'll put out a visitor's list at some point um, in the next few weeks. It's a lot of front seven, a lot of uh, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, edges, linebackers that they're looking at. Yes. And that's, I mean, Coach Prime's been talking about that for a while now. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I lied. It's only three new guys. 2027 quarterback Jace Johnson will also be at Colorado Spring Game. I don't know uh, how worked up we are about 2027, guys, but uh, there you go. Actually, I lied to myself. I'm just hoping to be around in 2027. <laughs> right. Uh, 2026 wide receiver Donovan Murph will also be at Colorado uh, Spring yes. Game. We talked about him uh, not too long ago, too. I think he just came out here not too long ago, within the last few weeks. Yep. Uh, one of the better receivers in the 2026 class, and then one more, 2025 four-star defensive lineman Jarquez Carter. Will also be at Colorado Spring Game. He's a defensive lineman from Florida at Newberry High School. So here you go. Five new uh, spring game visits. They've been sending out a lot of them. Or I guess the recruits have been posting them a lot more over the last day or two. So I'd expect more to come with that. That's going to be one hell of a week, man. Between the portal opening next week, yeah, 
Then going right into spring game week, mm-hmm. uh, we're about to ramp up. Yeah, you uh, you wanted some good news. You're going to get it yep, eventually soon. here. Very soon. That's about it for today, though. All right. Let's go to the Toyota chat. What do we got? Send in your questions if you have any. Yeah, shoot them in the chat. Um, Master Stickwork asks, who is number 54 at linebacker? 54 at linebacker. There's no way you get this. All right, go ahead. Bo Simmons LaPena. Ah, uh, of course. How could I forget? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think he was one of the later um, like walk-on additions last year. But he's sticking around. Local kid, though, Commerce City. Okay. Love it. Um, is Sal okay? I do not know. Yeah. I don't know. I would expect news to come out around, you know, decently soon about that. Maybe. I don't know. I really don't. I don't either. But I'm just guessing based on the news cycle. I'd hope so. It'd be nice to get some clarity. Who's number 30? Oh, man. That Terrell is Terrell Davis. Yeah. Philip Lindsay. It's Steph Br- Curry. <laughs> it's Braden Keith. Another local kid, cornerback out of Broomfield. Nice. Why are you guys asking about the walk ons today? Uh, I think there was a, a long, well off video. So we got lots of uh, practice footage today. Okay. Can't wait. Uh, oh, my bad. Atlanta State Focused and Informed asks, who will be DMV Sports' next interview? That's a good question. I feel like you have a decent idea. You floated some names out to me. Not ready to reveal anything. Our next interview? Yeah. Like I mean, a guess. Well, Neil, you'll be here tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Does that count? Yes, absolutely. Go back, Alyssa. What did that one say? Uh, I don't know what that means. Okay. That one. No, the one above uh, that. Forget about it. What's next? Bad Mama C. What do you think about spring game ticket sales going slower than expected? I don't know. I mean, I, I would give it some time here once we get closer to the event. Uh, maybe last year's weather has people a little more hesitant to Mm -hmm. uh, make their plans before they know what's actually happening. Um, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but there certainly were people who bought tickets last year and then didn't come because of the weather. Yeah. Um, You know, it looked like a a solid home game from like a bad team, meaning it was over 40,000, but not quite, you know, 53. Yeah. Um, So I think that could play a role. The other thing is like, we're we're super excited about the spring game mm-hmm. just because it's a it's a little taste but the actual action on the field isn't much to write home about um and maybe people just figured that out a little bit yeah um but i bet you when push comes to shove it's still going to be a very good crowd there and like we don't have near as for whatever reason the team's better but we don't have near as much hype this year it's just not as fresh, I guess. Well, I think once the season gets a little closer, we will. But last year, the hype was Coach Prime is here. This was your first right. chance to ever see Coach Prime, you know, on the field in black and gold. So I think it was a, just a slightly different time. Um, I think the hype will start building up. You know, remember last year, it was like Urban Meyer came to practice and went <laughs> on the radio and said, that team's for real. Like, that's how the hype. Yeah, yeah. That's how hype builds. Uh, Joel Klatt was in Boulder yesterday talking to Coach. Saw that. I'm sure it's for uh, his show. Yep. That'll be great. He did say later in the summer for when that comes out, though, so we might have to wait a while. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, How many scholarships are available? I I don't know, man. And honestly, I don't think it matters for the next three, four months. Yes. Drastically. Um, But I think it's only a couple right now. But that'll change very soon. Yeah, I think they're in the high 70s, but um, there's going to be movement. 
Nicholas asks, what are y'all projected stats for Shador and Travis this upcoming season? <laughs> Start with Travis. I mean, there's so many stats. <laughs> there are How many stats. receiving yards? <laughs> um, let's say 957. Okay, I'll say 1,001. Okay. <laughs> How many touchdowns? Eight. I'll say eight as well. How many interceptions? Give me four interceptions because people aren't going to throw as That's much exactly at him. exactly the number I had in my head. Passes defense, give me eight. <laughs> I'm not doing passes defense predictions. <laughs> the people asked, man. I'm just trying to give the people what they want. Shador, we're going... Uh, what do you have yardage-wise last year? Like 30... Uh, 33? 33, I think, yeah. All right, I'm going to say 36, 37, 40 touchdowns, three interceptions. Last year, he had 3,230. So I'll say, I'll say damn near 4,000 yards. Okay. Um, 40 touchdowns. Four interceptions. <laughs> All right. It sounds so absurd <laughs> to say that, but I, I, I really don't think it is. Uh, a Rosa Day asks, has Travis covered Wester on any videos yet? I think there's been a few. I can't say I remember it. Well, maybe not, I guess, if Travis has been playing mostly offense again. But I don't know. We'll probably get it at some point. But if it's one versus twos and twos versus ones, then... <laughs> Jermaine says, can we get Masters predictions from RK? Well, annoying-ass Bryson DeChambeau went out there and <laughs> probably fired seven under uh, on day one, which sucks. Um, I don't know. I, I like my guy, uh, Sahith the Gala. All right. There we go. I'm just – I'm honestly hoping for anything but Scheffler, which we're off to a decent start there. Okay. Um, Connor asks, Hank moving up the depth chart, would y'all pay half a mil for Damian Martinez? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what our cap space looks like. Yeah, I don't know either, but... Uh, I would, yes. I'll just say yes, I would. Why not? Yeah. He's that good. Uh, Radio Pastor asks, who do y'all think... Uh, We'll have a breakout year for the O-line or D-line. Breakout year. Does um, Jordan count? Who? Jordan Seaton. Hmm, sure. <laughs> I don't really think so, but I'm not going to fight you on it. I kind of think, well, actually, no. I'm going to change my answer. I'm going Tyler Brown. I'm going Hank Zelinskis. Oh, whoa. Expand. I, he's been working a lot with that first team offensive line at center. Okay. That's impressive. That's that's one of the ones that we said don't sleep on. Yep. Uh, Jim asks, who is 36? He has been making plays and Coach Prime calling it out. Uh, I think that's... Uh, Savion Wilkerson, 36 on offense? Yes. It's Nathaniel Watson on defense, so okay. that's who they're talking about. Nice. Yeah. Because, yeah... Uh, Savion Wilkerson is hurt right now. Yep. Uh-oh, my guy. Saw num first shot off first tee, way left. Off a tree. Trees have been generous today. That one didn't look generous. No. Uh, What else do we get? Oh, Sean, is the former TC receiver baby to you on the ground yet? No, not yet. Summer, right? Yep. I think he even said June, maybe. I think so. Um, now on the Super Chats. You got the Super Sticker today. All right, Big Teasy chimes in with a $10 Super Sticker. Thank you, Big Teasy. Pair character jumping up and down saying, number one fan. I'm Big Teasy's number one fan. Hell yeah. Tiger Woods just had to hit a shot left-handed. Really? Yeah. How is Tiger doing these days? Uh, just fighting those injuries. It sucks. That's a bummer. 
Uh, Mr. Hillsman, Super Chat, shout out to all the DMVR folks behind the scenes. Shout out to them for sure. Hell yeah. Quite a few of them in here right now, too. I can't see. There's too many cameras and screens and there's lights. Dre, there's Ali, there's Alyssa. Yaya was back there. Saw J Mike. J Mike's around here, yep. Uh, Big TZ with the Super Chat. Favorite line, why you... Uh, why are you getting out work today? I told you to rest because I want it. Uh, what do you mean? I love that attitude. Did you see it? I did see it. What? Okay. I'll, I'll explain it. <laughs> yeah, explain, please. <laughs> so, Coach Prime went up to Torreon Carter on a Saturday, I believe, and basically said, you know, big man, you're off till Wednesday or whatever. Like, I don't want to see you here. You're just take time to heal. Rest. Tuesday comes around, and Torreon Carter's at practice, full gear on the sideline, so he calls, he's, big man, get over here. So why are you working out today? I told you to stay home. Why are you here? And he's like, what do you mean, coach? Like, I'm trying to hear, get some work. And he's like, all right, then. No limping today because that means you're good to go. I gave you these days off to rest for a reason. I love it. I like the, uh, the initiative to still come out, though. Mm -hmm. um, it's the dog days of uh, spring if, ball, man. If Coach Prime said that to me, I would 100% think it was a test. <laughs> exactly. That's probably exactly <laughs> what Carter thought. Too. Exactly. He's like, he doesn't actually mean that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but he is one of the older guys on this roster. He's a graduate transfer. He's a big guy. He's played a lot of football. He's been through two knee injuries. Like, yeah. So. Uh, big boy. Yep. Big TZ again. One last one. Tomorrow is Friday. Are we doing the FDP cam for questions? <laughs> Did we make this a thing yet? Hashtag the chat has spoken. They want we'll the, the Friday Alyssa cam? <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow. Wow. Look at Alyssa. Getting her shine on. With Unk here, too. That'll yep. be fun. Oh, yeah. That will be fun. Uh, is that it to, for today? All right. That is it. What a day. Jeez. I love you guys through thick and thin. Yes. Same here. Also, uh, things are going good right now. Oh, yeah. There's no reason to be so, I don't know, contentious and just like on the verge of upset. We're, we're doing really good right now for where we're at in the spring. I love it. I so. honestly love the fact that Shador being Shador is not like one of the top things that's being talked about right now. Yeah. It shows you that there's a lot of other great things going on because if we ever need something good to talk about, we can just talk about Shador. Right. <laughs> um, because he's just that good. But it's like he's so consistent and steady. Yep. And there's so much... There's so many other exciting things going on right now that you don't have to talk about how great Shador has looked. I feel like this is kind of how uh, fall went last year. Yeah. Where Shador was like just dicing up the defense so much, especially towards the end of camp, that we almost kind of stopped talking about him. But at the same time, we, were all, we just knew what he was, what we were getting from him. And then they go out there week one against TCU. We knew what to expect. We knew what was coming. And the rest of the nation goes, oh, my God. Like... This guy can actually play. Did you see uh, Shador had to attend lecture hall? Yes. Did you watch it? I did. <laughs> that was funny. Um, I have two experiences from that classroom. One, uh, that's where I took my SATs. SATs? Yeah. You went to see you to take your SATs? Yeah. I mean, they try to find a big room in Boulder to put a bunch of kids in to take a test. You go to see you. Okay. Um, I didn't bring a calculator to the SATs. Yikes, Just, man. How did, uh, how did that go? Um, you know how they make you and the person next to you work on different things so you can't cheat off of them? Right. I just I was just like, there's this girl next to me. I'm like, hey, can I borrow your calculator? <laughs> wow, breaking like, the rules. Yep. Yeah. But then at one point, we were each on two different math sections. So she was using it, and then I would like reach over, grab it, put mm. it back. Um, yeah. Didn't really like do my research before the SATs. Um, she's a real one for helping you out there. She is. She did like roll her eyes about it. Oh, I'd expect something more than that. But too. she didn't just leave me out to dry. Yeah. And then my other experience in that classroom was one of my classes uh, freshman year. And I found out I had it with like one of my best friends, like on the first day. And we were mm -hmm. so hyped. And so like we sat next to each other every day. And like it was a, such a big lecture hall that like the teacher doesn't know what you're doing. So we just sat in the back and like 
looked at like all buffs and yeah um like set our fantasy lineups and shit all yep. day long yeah first midterm test comes bro open up the packet first question looks like it's in a foreign language to me <laughs> second question same thing third question same thing and then i just look over at my friend we both make eye contact and just fucking start laughing so <laughs> loud I think I got like a 23% on that oh midterm. Uh, it was a nice wake up call that you do have to actually listen to the teacher at least a little bit to know what the class is about. Yeah, I had a geology class in college where I sat in the very back of a big lecture hall and played a lot of Plants vs. Zombies on my phone. Oh, wow. A lot of uh, fantasy research back then, yeah, too. Yeah. All that stuff. All right, that's a good note to end on. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a good note. Didn't we have one more super chat? Oh, we did. Uh, Mr. Hillsman said one more just cause. Wow. That's love. Thanks, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you, Mr. You. Hillsman. All righty, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Uncle B uh, sitting here in the studio with us. Can't wait. See, See ya. Then. Let's go Buffs. Let's go Buffs. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 